This is Jesse Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. Welcome to the Warrior Event Center, where the Washington Warriors are going to take on the Marlowe Outlaws. The Outlaws coming off a win against Purcell by 20 points, Coach. So this should be a uh, uh, for the boys coming off a 20-point right. win. Yeah, that boy, boys game uh, after this girls game is going to be a fun one because uh, both teams coming off big victories. But uh, this girls game should be pretty good too. Marlowe ranked number 10 in the state, nine and three record. They lost to Purcell on Tuesday, 52 to 35. But other two losses are to, um, again, Purcell's ranked, but Dale, one of the top teams in Class 2A, 43 to 25, and then Idabel, who's the number one ranked team in the state in Class 3A, they lost them 50 to 38. So they're a very capable team uh, and challenge for the Lady Warriors as uh, Coach Brett Taha uh, has his girls playing pretty good basketball. But, Jesse, girls aren't playing too bad themselves. They're ranked number four in the state and are undefeated coming off of a championship at the Connorwall Tournament. Yeah, and the Warriors, you know, they kind of have a tough road ahead, boys and girls. I mean, this is a great program here at Marla. When you talk about whether it's basketball, boys, girls, whether you talk about football, this, right. is, this is a great Golf, school in Marla. Country. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So it should be uh, at least some entertaining games tonight. Yeah, both these teams uh, coming in, got a lot to play for. And you mentioned that there's been, you know, it's a kind of a tough stretch because coming off a tournament last week and then having to play two games on – this week with Tuesday and Friday games. Turn around next week, you got four more games. So if you look at this three-week stretch, which is normal for January basketball, you might be playing around 10 to 15 games in that three-week stretch. And so it'll be interesting to see how that grind affects both teams uh, as we get going tonight. I want to give a shout-out to our boy Vess, man in the camera tonight. So thank you, Vess, for running the camera. So got that. He's in here for Rhett Castle, getting some experience, and looks like we're going to have the uh, national anthem. Lovely performance, as usual, from this Warrior Band. Jesse, there is a lot of Warrior fans coming out to watch both the girls' and boys' teams here at home, I feel like, recently. And there's some excitement, a little bit of buzz in the air for the Warrior basketball programs as both teams are ranked in the top 20 with the Lady Warriors number four and the boys coming off a huge victory over a top 10-ranked Lindsay team. So it's going to be an electric evening. Well, you know, I feel like this uh, this has been a rivalry building for a few years, coming from the f more of a football side of things than basketball. But, you know, a lot of Marlowe fans traveled here as well. Oh, yeah. So a lot of fans here tonight. The energy, I already love it in the arena. We'll, we'll see how it is off kickoff here. Or I guess I should say tip-off. I'm a little rusty. It's been a while. It's a Christmas break. Yeah, it's, Christmas it's been break, a long time. Right? It's probably been a month, so three weeks. And as they... Uh, Get ready for the Lady Warriors introduction. We'll let Mr. Andy Newby take over.
Jesse, I think what uh, would su not surprise me, I guess, would, uh, what I like the most about this Lady Warrior team is they have four players averaging double figures. So there's really not just one person that you can key on. With uh, Lindert, Johnson, Sheffy, and Beller, you got a formidable group of girls there that can score and go off at any night. And then you put in Kendall Wells, who last time we were broadcasting the game against uh, earlier in the year, or excuse me, at the beginning of the year against Paul's Valley, at that time she was the leading three-point shooting uh, shooter on the girls' team, shooting around 43%. And so she's also a threat as well, but she does a lot of the other stuff that maybe doesn't get noticed. Yeah, for sure, and you talk about all that, and all that is important. And you also got some Lady Warriors coming off the bench putting up pretty decent numbers. I'll be, I was going to wonder if Marlo would look to start in his zone. The Lady Warriors struggled with the zone against Lindsay. When they're going up, won't go in. Number 10 is the girl to watch for the Marlo Outlaws. He's a pretty good player for them. Had an older sister that was really good as well. And she's the one who received that rebound. Warriors starting into man-to-man. -man. Number 10, yeah. yeah. She's got a wide open look there. Good rebound by Linder. Wells has it. Again, Marlowe looking at a little 1 2 2 zone, matching up out of it. Good job finding Linder on the baseline. This is that. Well, you're just going to get the rebound. Now the Outlaws have it going the other way. And not in a rush for the Outlaws. They're taking their time. Yeah, they're going to try to dictate the pace of this ball game. Lady Warriors like to push the pressure, and there's a turnover. And good defense there by the Lady Warriors. They're going to get a bucket here, and it's good off the fast break. They score for the, they take first blood, I should say, rather. Yeah, and that's Ryland Sheffy. She does a good job of jumping those passing lanes and getting steals. I would venture to say a majority of her points come in a fast break setting. Maybe got away with a little walk right there. I think so, Jeff. And 15 for the Marlowe. Just going to take it herself and get rejected. And then Marlowe going to foul there. That's two bad plays in a row for him. Yeah, that's usually what happens, Jesse. Is they get the foul on number three, but I thought 15 was in there, too. She goes in there and gets a tough shot and blocked and then nearly comes up and picks a foul, but that's what happens to her teammate, number three. And Lady Warriors will... Maintain possession. And a dangerous pass, and it's intercepted. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Cole, Coach Simon wanted that from Kelby. If you're going to throw a pass dangerously like that, you definitely don't want to stare it down before you throw it. <laughs> right. Marlowe, another turnover. Ooh. And they're going to get her right back. Yep. Yeah, Kendall on the travel there. Got a little bit ahead of herself, was trying to pass, decided not to, and then her feet were already moving in the process. So. Now, Co Coach Taha, she came over, I believe she was coaching some college hoops last year, and her husband was the girls' coach. And now he's sitting on the sideline as the assistant while she's the head coach. So pretty good coaching acumen over there on the outlaw bench. Tough shot there for Marlowe. Now the Warriors have it. A little two on two. Euro step. I won't go in. I thought she had that one in there. They're going to get a foul there. Presley Johnson gets a foul called on number three. That'll be her second foul. So Coach Taha goes right to the bench to bring in number 12. Yeah, we're three minutes in the game. You definitely don't want your, uh, one of your starters to be in foul trouble this early. You mentioned the bench of the Lady Warriors. That might be an advantage that they have on this Marlowe team. Linder goes up for the bucket. Number 10's third rebound of the evening. 4.53 to go in the quarter. Kind of been a bit of a sloppy game so far. Only two points. We're almost halfway through the quarter. Yeah, and... 
you know, like you mentioned earlier, Marlowe running a very slow-paced offense. But a lot of that has to do with the defense that the Lady Warriors are putting on them. Maybe again got away with another walk there. Johnson. For three. He's been shooting Good hustle there by Johnson. Too. The Warriors are going to get the offensive rebound. Just kind of out hustled the Marla, uh, Outlaws there. Good ball movement there by Lady Warriors. Get an open look. And the three goes in. And Coach Hall is going to take a timeout. We'll take one with him. Lady Warriors lead five to nothing over the Marlowe Lady Outlaws. You're watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Hi, I'm Jake Coles, number 28 for the Washington Warriors. My mom, Sonia, with the Santa Fe Agency, is a graduate of Washington High School and a longtime Washington Warriors and Lady Warriors supporter. As an independent agency, Santa Fe has the Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. I'm Jesse Carriage, one with Coach Scholes and TJ Scholes. Warriors up right now, five to zero. Four minutes and five seconds left to go in the first quarter. It's been a very slow paced game. We'll see if Marlo can pick it up. They've done relatively nothing on offense except take bad shots, really tough shots. Yeah, they've only gotten that one good look for number 10 as the Lady Warriors starting to press and get a turnover immediately. If I'm not mistaken, that, uh, the uh, good look they got from number 10, that was on their opening or second possession of the yeah, Warriors early for sure. Warriors working the ball around. Not in a rush either. Both teams, well, the Warriors definitely moving with more intensity. And shots can be blocked. An opportunity there to push the ball for Marlowe, and they kind of just hung back. You kind of seeing the differences of two paces. And of course, Lady Warriors trying to get a bucket so they can set up in the press and create that pace, but unable to make one on that possession. And again, it's just laid back on offense for Marlowe. You know, they might just, they're being pretty deliberate. And then trying to find a good shot. That's a tough shot. Bella picks up a foul. And will shoot two free throws. Warriors' first foul of the quarter. You think in a, a, a slow-paced game like this, you'd be seeing a lot of fouls, but it's been quite the opposite. Only three total for if you add up each team. Well, it's slow on the offensive side, but it's very fast-paced as far as the time's going by. The quarter's kind of went by pretty quick. There just hadn't been a lot of action <laughs> offensively for either team as there's only been two buckets made. One by Sheffy and one by Beller. Number 10 for Marlowe, probably their best player. Going to knock down both free throws there. And if you're the Warriors, you probably don't want to send her to the line anymore tonight. Nice little set there, and it's stolen. And good hustle by Sheffy as she Gets that steal. Let's see if our Purcell Vision Source instant replay works tonight. As you can see Sheffy jumping that pass and stopping them from advancing that. Warriors able to set up in their press. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. And 10 for Marlowe is going to go up. Gets a good look. Can't finish it. And you see immediately the Warriors are pressing it down the court as Marlowe would probably have taken their time there. Nice look by Sheffy. Three won't go in. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to push the pace, Jess. Marlowe's doing a good job of taking their time on the offensive side. I think Kelby, Jesse, I think Kelby might be able to draw an offensive foul as this game progresses, because their defense is really frustrating number 10 as they take a three. The rebound there by Marlowe. And a bad, a good rebound, bad pass. <laughs> Warriors have it going the other way. Nice yeah. Euro. And she's going to go to the line? Yeah, they're going to call a shot, a foul on the shot, as uh, you see on the replay. Beller makes a nice little move. 
to avoid the defense, and she had nothing to do or nothing left to do but get her on the wrist. Yeah, Bella likes that euro step to the right. Mm -hmm. she, that's her second time she's uh, done that tonight. As 15 checks in for 12. Next time she does it, maybe a little, you know, jab to the right, then you know, go right. left. Right, might be wide open. And she's gonna capitalize. Warriors go up seven two. Marlo breaks the pressure without any turnovers. Good defense by Wells there. Oh, good hustle there by Johnson. And now the Warriors have it going the other way. And again, it's fast break, fast break for the Warriors. Nice toss back. So I love the ball movement. Get a wide open three for Sheffy. And it's good. And Marlo's going to use another timeout. We'll take one with them. Well, we're going to stay right here, Jesse. We are. Check out this, uh, this instant replay. So this is what good basketball looks like. I thought it was very unselfish. And uh, this good overall basketball as Kendall finds the open person. And Sheffy drains the three to make Marlo call another timeout. And like Jesse said, we'll take one with him. The new right policies with a variety of insurance companies. So finding the right fit for you, the customer, is easier. Please reach out to Sonia for your next insurance quote whether it be on your house, auto, boat, RV, or commercial needs. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills for doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys of pop pop. <laughs> Welcome back to the Warrior of Incident. This is Jesse Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 10 to two, and talking about that shot that was just hit uh, before we went off, the, the, I'm drawing blanks here, man. It's been a while since I did this, I'm a little rusty, but. You don't get credit to the uh, pass to the assist or the pass to the pass to the assist. They, right, they call it un a very unselfish play from the Warriors. Yeah, well, hockey assist is what they call it. In hockey, you get that you get credit for it, but not in basketball. But you're exactly right. The original pass out to Kendall. And we get another turnover. Good pressure there by Beller on number 10. I was mentioning it earlier on the last possession, number 10 looking like he's dropping her shoulder into Kelby. Kelby might be able to try to get a little sly and fall down there and get a pick up a foul on Marlowe's best player. You got to think if he's out. You know, going from deep. Oh, it's in and out. Under a minute. I like the confidence these Lady Warriors have to keep putting up these threes. They'll eventually start going in. They're close already. Yeah. And that's one thing that Coach Simon had mentioned is that they haven't really shot the ball particularly well, but they're still finding ways to win as Marlo Lady Outlaw makes a tough shot on the baseline to make it 10 to four. But that'll, that'll bode well later on in the year whenever they're playing tough competition, tougher competition. As Johnson gets an open three. And get a rebound there for the Outlaws, 23 seconds to go. Yeah, I got to think this Marlo might be holding this for the last possession. And it usually takes them 15 seconds to get <laughs> off a shot. They so. run their normal stuff. It looked like they're trying to do a fake handoff. Nice pivoting and lift fake by 32. Good defense there by Linder. 32 kind of looking to throw up a shot, get the foul there. And Chevy's going to put up a floater. Almost goes in. Nice looking shot there. Just hits the back iron Warriors go into the second quarter, leading 10 to 4. I'm watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Tech School. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Air Products Supply would like to wish Jackson Hendricks and the Washington Warriors the best of luck this football season. Air Products Supply is your local Client Master and Lux Air Distributor, supplying quality HVAC equipment and parts to Oklahoma and Texas. Give us a call at 405-288-0233 and we will get you in contact with the local. Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. I'm Jesse Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 10-4 on the, Mar the excuse me, Marlowe Outlaws. It's been a while since I did this. All right, give me a break. Yeah, the 
Only well, two people scored for the for both teams, I guess. Um, Kobe Beller and Rylan Sheffy each with five points and each with a three. The Lady Warriors are getting some good looks from the three-point line. Only able to hit two that quarter, but like you said earlier, you got to think that they'll start falling eventually. They keep shooting with some confidence. It'll be the outlaw basketball, so we'll see what Coach Taha has drawn up. I think the thing to note is Marlo used two uh, timeouts that quarter, and after they came out off the timeout, it didn't really look like it changed anything. Right. Just They're kind of using it to kind of slow the momentum down the Warriors. Is kind of see that number 10 and number 32, they seem to be the ones that get the ball the most to play a little two-man game here. It's a lot of tough looks for yeah. Marlo. Yeah, Lady, Deep, Lady Warriors defense is just keeping them from getting anything easy. Good hustle there. Nice tip out by Presley Johnson. And I've been I've been pretty impressed with her uh, toughness after that first game against Purcell. I know she got challenged a little bit by her, her dad. And she's rebounded well since then. And she's played some pretty good defense. One thing for Marlo I do like is they – Forced stuff in the first quarter. They didn't force anything. <laughs> that was a very long possession. They had some chances to put up some not so good looks, and they decided to pull it out and pass. Because that's not going to go in, but tough turnover there. Well, you mentioned that, Jesse. It's seven minutes and 12 seconds left in this quarter, so 48 of the seconds Marlowe's had the ball. And so, and it's been on this side of the court, so it's been a very, very long possession as the Lady Warriors were not able to secure that rebound. Marlowe kind of got away. Oh, a nice move there by 32. Looked, I looked I like know. a walk, but yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't. Close. It wasn't, but yeah, it was close. It was like close. a slow Euro step. Let's see. I was an hour down four. Both teams doing a good job of rebounding. Not too many uh, offensive rebounds on either side. So, if you remember when we. We, we announced that Lexington game. That's all it seemed like the Lady Warriors were getting was every offensive rebound that they wanted. Seems like Marlo really works on driving and kicking. No, you're exactly right. They're, and they'll get to the paint, come to a jump stop. They'll look for a fake pass. I'm gonna get a jump ball here. But you got you expect that from you know a good coach teaching the fundamentals to the players, and you don't see a whole lot of turnovers once they get in there. They they're pretty patient once they get into the paint and making their decisions. But also notice who the ones are holding handling the ball the most time. It's 32 or 10, and so those are their best players, and they seem to be making the best decisions. Yeah, you see the discipline and patience that's been instilled in these uh, Marlow Outlaws. They're not really forcing anything. On the flip side of that, the Warriors will force shots, but they'll make them, so. Well, they want to get up a lot of possessions in this user athleticism to try to wear down, wear down the other team. Ooh. What about that one? Okay. Ryland Sheffy gets called for the travel. We'll have her on at halftime of the boys game. Interview her. Started last year for the Lady Warriors, one of the leading scorers. And she was leading the Lady Warriors last time we had the stats in scoring. Not sure what that number looks like now, but she's one of those four girls that average double figures. She already has five tonight. I mean, you look at Marlo, they're not, I, I, number 10 is going to put up a shot. Right. Maybe a bit of frustration there for nothing. She for might be one of the, we talked about her being their best player, so she might have a little bit more of a green light than the other girls. She thought she was going to be able to hit that one. She can tell they're running everything through 10 and 32. With Marlo, you notice a lot of these girls will pick up their dribble before they need to a lot of the time. It's going to be a foul on Lanny Gay as she entered in for Brianna Lindert. I 
I think Marlowe's best chance to win would be to try to keep this game as short as possible. And you can see if there was like a time of possession for who had the ball the most, it would definitely be in favor of the Lady Outlaws. A high arcing three. And again, the Warriors immediately get the ball and press it up the court. Beller's going to go up. And it won't go in. What a, what a good hustle there by Sheffy, but what a difference where Marlo has the ball for probably a minute and 30 seconds, it feels like, and the Warriors going to push the ball down and almost get you know get rid of it in like 10. Yeah. And they're looking to score quickly. As Ken gets a breather. And the 12 turned the ball over earlier in the first quarter. We'll see what Kelby Beller does, is able to do against her as they run a trap at her. Good. I like that idea by Coach Simon. The girl just came off the bench and start trapping her. They're looking, looking, yeah, good job. Good switch there by Beller. They had Jaden Taylor in a mismatch, and Kelby is able to switch off. Kelby much stronger and taller defender guarding the post. Three fifty to go in the quarter. Lady Warriors trying to find a gap in this zone. Sheffy's gonna put up another floater and that won't go in. And now we see what Marlowe does here. <laughs> 10-6 to six still. Warriors haven't scored this quarter. And Outlaws only scored one bucket. And the, oh, I thought she dragged her pivot foot. And see the Warriors, I think you can start to pick up, you know, that was going to be on Bella on the ground. You start to pick up what they're doing. They just drive to the top of the key and stop. Yeah. You know? well, and then you notice Coach Simon, he went with the trap last uh, possession in the half court. You got to wonder if maybe he tries to go back to that to try to pick up this pace because they're not, they turned the outlaws over in the first quarter and were able to get some easy looks and uh, haven't been able to do so as number 10 takes a quick three on the inbounds play. They're going to get a foul. Yeah, you, have, probably, you haven't been able to make any buckets down here on, on this end, so you can't set up in your press, so you might have to start looking at pressing in the half court try to create some turnovers. Warriors have been liking the long nice ball play. today. That was a nice little set there as they screen the back of the zone and get Presley Johnson for an easy bucket. Yeah, they're finding the hole in the zones. That's, you know, that's just a, a tricky thing when you run zone or when you run man. You know, there's going to be different problems with each and the uh, problem with zone is you're just going to find a lot of holes. Yeah, and then you'll, you'll see a lot of coaches try to run some sets to get some easy layups out of zones and hopefully get the other team out. Because otherwise, if they pack it in, you almost have to hope that you can hit some outside shots. This 10's going to go up. Looks Good like she tried, to, she tried to hit it off of somebody and bounced right to Kendall Wells. Nice pass. And you can see the the veteranship of Kendall there, she knows we're right where she needs to be on defense. She's get the steal and then on the other end gets the assist. Yeah, we'll take another look at that. And uh, you're exactly right. As she gets the ball up the court quickly and Linder, you got to get set to Linder too, running to the rim. Gets down there. And she's averaging double figures and a lot of those shots are around the rim. And credit to her teammates for finding her, but also you got to credit Linder for and doing some tough work inside the paint and being tough and running the floor. We'll take a quick break. Where is up? 14 to 6. Licensed and trusted contractor near you. This is Tyler Beller, the voice of Air Product Supply, signing off. Go Warriors! Construction is a proud Warrior partner. They are the leading directional drilling contractor with major operational hubs all over Oklahoma and in Texas. Their involvement in and support of our community goes far beyond utility construction. They're also a good neighbor and friend. When experience and safety count, your best source for directional drilling is B&H Construction. Go Warriors! 
Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. I'm Jesse Carriage. I'm with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 14-6. Two minutes, 10 seconds to go in the second quarter. Yeah, a little bit of a 4-0 run there in the last minute by the Lady Warriors. is going to allow them to set up in their press and try to create some turnovers. Outlaws have had their chances around the basket and were unable to knock them down. Or the other thing I was impressed with, they weren't able to draw any fouls. The Lady Warriors did a good job of walling up and not fouling while they're around the basket. As number three comes in, she's got two fouls for the Outlaws. Let's see what Marlo tries to do on this offensive play. Marlo, time of possession must be pretty significant at this point. And for the Warriors, that means when you are on offense, you Marlo's going to take a deep three there. Well, that's a set play, too, though. you got to think that number three might be one of their best shooters as uh, she was able to get loose on that open look. But What I was getting at is the Warriors need to capitalize on their offensive possessions because they're really not getting as much as they're used to as Kendall Wells is going to knock down the three. What a beautiful ball movement again by the Lady Warriors. And there's a turnover. So this is another thing, Jesse, you got to think about. Once that lead starts ballooning up, you can't take as much time off the clock now. You know, you can't, you got you to find some ways to score. And Coach Taha has tried to stop the momentum on each run that the Lady Warriors have had, but she's used three timeouts this half. And I'm sure she'll try to want to save these last two for the second half if they're able to climb back in this game. There's no catch in Presley Johnson. Under a minute to go. We're just going to retain possession there. That's a good, uh, good idea. But it's always hard to kind of throw against the way you're running. And that execution wasn't there for Johnson as they find Kelby in the corner. We're going to get a Lady Warrior for a foul. Looks like it's going to be Kendall Wells. Only the 14th foul, though, Jesse. It's been a pretty clean, pretty clean half as far as fouls are concerned for both teams. Marlowe's been able to beat this press all game, and yeah. commentator Jinx there. That you could tell that girl did not want the ball in her hand, and that's what the coach is telling. Why are you throwing it back to her? She's supposed to do something else. And the commentator Jinx works out <laughs> in our favor for once. Thirty-six seconds left. Jaden Wells in the ball game for the Lady Warriors. Beller driving, and with twenty-five, you think Warriors can just hold it for last shot here? Yeah, that's what it looks like they're going to do. Coach Simon's yelling out the play call. You know they practice these situations. As Beller's unable to get that ball, that might be a two-point takedown. If you're looking at wrestling. Jaden Wells with a three. Three seconds to go, two. So Marlo could still get a shot here. Yeah, they might just throw it in and see what 22 oh, does they're gonna here. Get a, here, but I don't think they see number three down here deep, and neither the coaches. Coach Simon, he doesn't see it deep either. But maybe this now they're backing up. <laughs> They're going to pick up full court, match up. Not make it easy. Two seconds. That's about two dribbles. You got three. Going to get it all. Oh. That's not going to be any good. Lady Warriors lead going in a half, 17 to 6. Good defensive effort by Lady Warriors. They only give up two points in the second quarter. They lead over the Marlowe Outlaws. You're watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. We got a little bit of a presentation, Jesse, as Hayden Hicks, the senior guard for the Washington Warriors, scored his thousandth point last week. So he got himself a little bit of an award. Thank you. 
life long goal of Hayden to achieve. Hayden would like to thank his family, friends, teammates, and coaches for supporting the leading and to help him achieve this goal. Presenting a thousand foot ball. To Hayden Dix, Coach Trevor Smith, on the first floor, and Boston Moore. Let's give another round of applause for Hayden Dix and Boston Moore. What an honor there for Hayden Hicks, Jesse, a kid that spends countless hours in the gym working on his shot. In fact, getting in trouble multiple times over the course of his career for propping gym doors open <laughs> and sneaking in uh, to work on his game. And so give him credit. Only not a, that's, a, that's a rare club, 1,000-point scores. There's only been two since I've been here, him being one of them. Chandler Haley, the other one. As he averaged 20 and 10 his senior year. Well, Manny Trejo right there knocking on the door whenever he was a senior. He's only six points short, short so it's an exclusive club. Well, if you're going to get in trouble, you might as well get in trouble for something like that. Right, yeah, he wasn't doing anything bad. He was just... <laughs> but everybody knew. He knew if that red Ford pickup truck was hanging out in the back of the, uh, of the event center, someone might be in there shooting. So he's had to be creative. I think one time snuck a rock <laughs> to prop up the door, and we hope to have him on at halftime here in a little bit. We'll see if we can get him on. I know they got to get ready. They got a big game against the uh, 16th-ranked Marlow Outlaws. And we'll take a break. We'll see if we can get him on here before halftime ends. Lady Warriors up 17 to six. This is Warrior basketball on Washington Warriors TV. Train with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Hey, Warrior fans, this is Brian Arthur. My wife, Jennifer, and I are proud sponsors of the Washington Warriors and would like to wish all the Warriors and their coaches the best of luck this season. When you need a locally owned company that you can trust, look no further. For over 20 years, we have offered all of our customers the best products and services in the industry. Whether it's residential or commercial, we got you covered. Give us a call or visit our website. Entertain your children and grandchildren with videos that teach character and good values like obedience, kindness, gratitude, love of country, and self-worth. You know, just plain old common sense. Go to musicmunchkins.com to stream or order DVDs. And you'll be proud to see some of our own younger Washington Warriors in action. That's musicmunchkins.com. Go Warriors! Hey, Warrior fans. There's a credit union designed for our community by our community members. Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member owned, not for profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're located behind Goldsby Store. We're here for you, federally insured by NCUA. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, is your air conditioner making a sound like it's ready to take off? Is your heater not producing enough heat to take the chill out of the air? Then call Airfare Heat and Air. Dwayne Branham, Noah Zamora, owners of Airfare, are proud supporters of the Washington Warriors and are hometown guys with a hometown company that will give you great pricing on Luxair and Climate Master Geothermal HVAC systems. Need service on your existing equipment? Call them today at 405-626-1989 to schedule a service visit. That's Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Hi, I'm Jake Coles, number 28 for the Washington Warriors. My mom, Sonia, with the Santa Fe Agency, is a graduate of Washington High School and a longtime Washington Warriors and Lady Warriors supporter. As an independent agency, Santa Fe has the ability to write policies with a variety of insurance companies, so finding the right fit for you, the customer, is easier. Please reach out to Sonia for your next insurance quote, whether it be on your house, auto, boat, RV, or commercial needs. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills to doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys of Pop Pop Tech School. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. 
Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Air Product Supply would like to wish Jackson Hendricks and the Washington Warriors the best of luck this football season. Air Product Supply is your local Client Master and Lux Air Distributor, supplying quality HVAC equipment and parts to Oklahoma and Texas. Give us a call at 405-288-0233 and we will get you in contact with a local, licensed, and trusted contractor near you. This is Tyler Beller, the voice of Air Product Supply, signing off. Go Warriors! Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. I'm Justin Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. And an interesting first half, I guess we could say. Warriors found themselves up 17-6 against the Outlaws. Yeah, a quick, a quick time-wise first half, because if you look, it's only 7:20, and the the court there wasn't a lot of whistle stoppage. Only four fouls each, um, and but there also wasn't a lot of points scored um, from from the Marlboro Outlaws as they deliberately ran their offense. And really, when they turned the ball over, the Lady Warriors did a good job of capitalizing and trying to get easy buckets off of that. Yeah, for sure. And the few positions they had, it felt like. Yeah. You know, they did a good job capitalizing. As Marlo, no shot clock, so might as well take all the time you need. But at the same time, that only led them to six points. It's funny you mentioned the no shot clock thing. As a lot of the uh, Mr. Newby and Mr. Reynolds and myself were talking about that, they voted on the shot clock this week in the OSSA board of directors and it would have only affected classes 3a and up and they decided on an eight to seven vote that they would not be doing it and so um kind of an interesting thing you think they know you have 35 second shot clock so you wonder how many times marlo might have hit that shot clock tonight and how many uh, times in the same possession <laughs> right uh, as they were like we said they, they weren't stalling they were just looking for the best possible shot and you got to give credit for the lady warrior defense as they were able to uh, keep the Marlboro Outlaws from getting a good look. But, uh, yeah, that, you know, whenever they built this gym and they ordered these goals, Stuart McPherson ordered these clocks so that they could fit a shot clock with the anticipation of having that in the future. And it's closer than we think, but the uh, it won't be happening uh, within the next year or two. And I don't mean to get political, but... I might have voted on a shot clock. On a shot clock? I, I might have voted on it. That's what we were talking about, and I, I kind of like the idea of it, but the other thing is, do the costs uh, justify actually having one? Because how many times is a shot taken over 40 seconds? So like a possession lasted over 40 seconds? I think the idea is to make sure that there's no nobody out there at half court just holding the ball while the other team just stands in the paint and doesn't play defense. And so... They want to get rid of the stalling. The other thing is to try to get players ready for college, but there's not a whole lot of high school players who are fortunate enough to go play college ball, so why would you waste your uh, monies on something like that? But as the uh, Lady Warriors, you guys, inbound play as Sheffy gets hammered. Uh, quick start for the Warriors there. Yeah. Again, we'll have Rylan Sheffy on halftime of the boys' game. In two seconds, they're already at the line. And yeah. That kind of shows uh, what the first half was for the Warriors. They were just quick, high-paced, and looks like they're going to stay active on it. And uh, missed the first one. Yeah, I think the biggest thing here is that the Lady Warriors will be able to set up in their press, make or miss on this play. Uh, we're missing both of them for the Warriors there. I think a notable, another notable thing we forgot to mention, Marlo used three timeouts during that first half. Right. Well, and I think that's what you should do if you're Coach Taha as far as, like, you know that the Warriors are the better team, and so you want to try to cut as much momentum as you can. So every time they ran a 4-0 run, and Sheffy nearly gets there in time for the charge. Let's take another look at that. But you, Coach Taha was just really trying to make sure that the Lady Warriors' 4-0 runs didn't turn into 10-0 runs, and that's why she was using those timeouts. And, Nice and one there by the Marlowe Outlaw, number 22. Yeah, strong finish, kept her composer, uh, composure, excuse me, while getting... Uh, That's and one, right? Yeah, the yeah. officials and the players, some of the players, an official didn't know exactly what had happened there. So they 
scored six in the first half, doubled, uh, got half of that already in the second half on less than a minute. The rebound goes up, hit it, falling away. That just shows the athleticism of Lindert. She's able to make that tough bucket, to extend the lead to 10. Yeah, and if the Warriors can keep this 10-point lead, that's a, that's a comfortable score against this Marlowe Outlaw team. Yeah, you got to think that's like a 20-point lead with the, how deliberate they are on offense. We'll see what this Marlo, uh, Marlo nice offense defense. is saying. Yeah, great defense right there. Lady Warriors is more physical than the Outlaws. They come up with that steal. Nice kick to the corner. Again, there's Presley Johnson. Talked about her in the first half, how she's, you know, the first game, when she's just a freshman, you kind of realize how physical and how fast that game moves. You can see it kind of starting to slow down for her and her matching that physicality because I don't think you know how physical you can be until you get put in those situations. And she's definitely shown that over the course of the season. Marlo looking like they're running the same thing they were running in the first half. Just taking their time, showing patience. I think one advantage they have is they, they're big. 32 is able to handle the rock a little bit. And so that drags Lindert out. She's not used to being guarding. If she guards other teams' post players. She's used to them staying around the basket. And so that's kind of helped them relieve a little bit of the pressure. A lot of movement yeah. for the Warriors here. And missed the screen. You can see that on film. I think Kendall missed the screen and wasn't able to screen for Presley. Presley's also moving, so that might have kept Kendall from trying to set a moving screen. They post up Linder. Yeah, that's going to be Ooh. a foul. And that's one thing I've always admired about uh, Coach Clark when he was the coach is he showed these girls how to draw fouls. And he just really throw themselves into the other team and end up through the free throw line. His team's always shot more free throws than the other teams. 0 for 3 from the line to start the second half. We, we've seen that some in some games by the Lady Warriors, a struggle from the free throw line. Most notably that Guthrie game, which is closer than it probably should have been. And Guthrie's a good team. They came off a Noble Tournament win. They won the Noble Tournament last week, but... Uh, Marlo could have had a double-figure double victory if they'd have made some free throws down the stretch. Yeah, Marlo had 23 wide open there on the fast break. They're going to try to post up 10 on Sheffy, and that's too easy. Sheffy's going to have to fight around her if she's going to continue to guard her. See, she's got quite a bit of size advantage on Sheffy. Nice pass by Kendall. And you see the good vision by Kendall there. Yeah, that's a good look. And again, I hadn't watched a lot of film, but just from watching their games, it seems like Kendall is always the one finding Lindert as Lindert moves across the baseline and gets the buckets to push this lead up to 11. Warriors lead 22 to 11. BH Construction is a proud Warrior partner. They are the leading directional drilling contractor with major operational hubs all over Oklahoma and in Texas. Their involvement in and support of our community goes far beyond utility construction. They're also a good neighbor and friend. When experience and safety count, your best source for directional drilling is BH Construction. Go Warriors! Welcome back to the Warrior Events Center. I'm Justin Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 22 to 11, 508 left in the third quarter. And I did not mess up the quarter that time. I always mess it up like the first time I say it. So you see Coach Simon getting in his little diamond press. Try to extend this lead. Outlaws are ready for it. Good okay. hustle by Bella. I thought she traveled. A lot of hesitancy. Hesit oh, I can't even say That's that. Close. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah, there we go. Good word. From the Marlowe Outlaws. You see that several times tonight. They have a fast break opportunity, and they just choose to set up their offense. Yeah. Well, Bella did a good job of sprinting back on her defensive assignment. and If they would have tried to find her, the next girl, it would have been a steal. 
they're looking to go in the post again with number 10. Now Kelby switches off. So, again, good, good high basketball IQ by the Warrior defense to switch off defenders. Marlowe is going to miscommunication and turn over. They've been a bit sloppy coming out in the second half. Yeah, that's a, that's like a uh, golden rule. If you're going to go back door, you need to go back door. And she she was shuffling her feet. Her teammate expected her to do that and never did as the Lady Warriors go with a little zipper action and get Leonard an easy two. This might be the largest lead of the day for the Warriors yeah, at 13. 13-point 13 lead halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, you're starting to see... Oh, that's a nice move. You're starting to see Marlowe put number 10 down low a bit more. Nice pass <laughs> off the <laughs> defender. <laughs> and somehow that's going to work out. Linder having a big third quarter for the Lady Warriors. Number 10 didn't shoot the ball particularly well in the first half. They're starting to post her up more. Yeah, and Taha's going to take her fourth timeout. She'll be left with one, but again... You're down 15. You, don't, you can't take your timeouts home with you and use them for the next game, so you got to use them for what you got now. The Lady Warriors up. Largest lead of the game, 15. 3.35 to go in the third quarter. You're watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at scordle.com slash stream. Hey, Warrior fans, this is Brian Arthur. My wife, Jennifer, and I are proud sponsors of the Washington Warriors and would like to wish all the Warriors and their coaches the best of luck this season. When you need a locally owned company that you can trust, look no further. For over 20 years, we have offered all of our customers the best products and services in the industry. Whether it's residential or commercial, we got you covered. Give us a call or visit our website. Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. Jesse Carey, Coach Scholes, Warriors up 26 to 11, largest lead of the night at 15, 335 left in the third quarter. And if, yeah. Mar if Marlo's going to start doing something, they're going to... Need to start doing it now. Yeah, that's a, and they scored nine points already in this quarter, almost halfway through. So that's the offense that we've been accustomed to seeing. Is they try to get it into number 10. Good job by Kelby to get around in front and deny that pass. Last time they did this, they sprinted number 10 out to the quarter real quick, and that's what they do. Get the post move. Nice up and under by 32. That's a good move. Just Good job by Linder just using her physicality to not let her get an inch on that move. That's a really nice up and under move by 32. You can see the potential there as they get the ball off the court quick and Wells gets a three. Tough bounce. Yeah. Marla able to get it. We, uh, you know, the first the first half felt like it flew by. This has not been the case in the third quarter. A lot more uh, whistles being blown, a lot of stoppage of play. Yeah. We're going to go right into number 10 on the post. That is a tough, tough matchup yeah. down there for Sheffy. That's interesting that they keep switching back and forth. I wonder why Sheffy keeps starting out on number 10. As Presley Johnson gets the block. Nice job. Oh, oh. that's a good decision by Kendall to not shoot that, but... Good hustle there by Ryland Sheff to get back in the play. Outlaws could have had a chance at a layup there if not for that. Marlow going to take a three, and it goes in. Maybe the spark they need to get back in this game. Down 12 now. And if Kendall can uh, catch that ball there and put up a three, then, you know, that's her money shot. Yeah, and she just took one from that same spot, so you got to feel like she's a little more comfortable as Linder gets in there. Again, great pass there by Johnson to find her. She gets fouled. Going up, you take a Purcell Vision Source instant replay. Nice little pocket pass from Leonard. She'll get two free throws. First one's good. The Warriors opened up the half 
uh, not shooting very well from the free throw line. They've done a lot better since. Yep. Again, Lindert. You know, look at the box score in this third quarter, and she see she's got the majority of her points in this quarter. Got to be getting close to double figures. She puts up her second free throw, and it's in. Lady Warriors up 14. They set up in their diamond trap. So you can see, Jesse, they're, they're daring the outlaws to try to throw that deep pass. You mentioned it earlier in the half where you said one of the players was wide open. But it, a lot of times those girls aren't able to make that pass with uh, when they're set up in against that trap. And again, Coach, Coach Simon trying to push the tempo here on the defensive side of the ball. Marlowe is going to wow. go decent look, and it goes in. That's a tough make. Back to a 12-point game. Rose has it. Yeah, Outlaw's back in their zone. Rose job. driving. Gets to Sheffy. Sheffy for three. Again, Johnson getting that backside rebound. She's it taken away, though, but you got to like her crashing in. She's got good height. And again, Marlowe had, Marlo had number three there open on the left side. Yeah, they weren't able to find her. It's happened a few times tonight on the fast break. Or at least I wouldn't call that a fast break, but at least them transitioning into offense. Good the defense, defense there by Sheffy to poke the ball. Under a minute in this third quarter, Sheffy going up and up. oh, maybe should have got the call there. Yeah, she's trying to draw the foul as Jaden Taylor checks in for Kendall Wells. Now, Leonard trying to do a little bit too much there in that post up. Just good defense by number ten. Good, good. Job by Sheffy there to stagger number 10 for Marlowe, hitting the ball while she was going up. Good hustle by both teams there. You, you mentioned Sheffy there getting a little tip off of 10 shot, but then the Outlaws come back and tip the ball out of bounds. And the Lady Warriors look like they're about to score two points there. But it's just the oh, tough foul there, and even a better, even better sell. But it's just, uh, I think you said it earlier, does Marlowe want to run with the Warriors? Is that a good idea? Probably not, as you see. A great little inbound set here that the Lady Warriors run a lot. You got Linder with the look, and number 10 hammered down on her. Linder shoots two. 34 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Lady Warriors up 12. Kind of been a short bench tonight for the Lady Warriors, but they've only played eight players. In, a, in the Conawa game, they played, they went deep in their bench, but this is against a little bit tougher competition. They're ranked 10th ranked team in the state in the Marlowe Outlaws. Big part of that is the Warriors haven't been fouling. There's six fouls the whole game. No, that's true, that's true. Twenty seconds left. Again, Marlowe just being patient, looking for a good look. Now, out of this game, only 13 points. Draw the foul there, it'll go to the line. And if Marlowe's going to get back into this game, they've got to start being more consistent at the line. But they really haven't got that many opportunities at the line to be consistent. Yeah, they they haven't shot a whole lot of free throws tonight. And they're going to try to get here to see if they can get on the board with that. They did have only six points in the first half. They've got 10 this quarter. And Lady Warriors have 12. It's been a pretty close quarter. You got to think if the Warriors get the rebound here, you want to start pushing the ball immediately. Only 11.1 seconds in the quarter. They got six. Bella's going to draw the foul. Yeah, it kind of got bailed out because she... She did travel, but she got she, the travel was caused by number ten bumping her. And Kelby was she didn't have much of anything to do there, and so she picked her dribble up. But ten bailed her out with the foul. That's her third foul of the night. Three seconds left. You got to think, catch, pass, shoot. 
Catch a dribble shoot. Nice Veller's gonna take it for three. Oh, in and out. Into the third quarter, the Warriors are gonna be up 13. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Jesse just got robbed <laughs> as that ball goes halfway down and then pops out at the buzzer. Like you said, they lead 13 going into the fourth quarter. You're watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Entertain your children and grandchildren with videos that teach character and good values like obedience, kindness, gratitude, love of country, and self-worth. You know, just plain old common sense. Go to MusicMunchkins.com to stream or order DVDs. And you'll be proud to see some of our own younger Washington Warriors in action. That's MusicMunchkins.com. Go Warriors! Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. Jesse Carey joined with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 29-16, start of the fourth quarter. And that third quarter took uh, maybe as long as the first half did. Yeah, a uh, lot more scoring. That's definitely true. Lady Warriors able to get to the free throw line quite a bit. And Brianna Linder with a big quarter on her own, uh, pacing them that quarter. But... As we mentioned before, Marlo only scored six points in the first half, got ten in that third quarter. Three of them coming from a three-pointer from number 22 as we get to the final stanza of this game. And number 10 for Marlo hasn't really been able to get going tonight, I believe, other than a couple of shots down low. No, you're right. And Woods has done a good job of keeping her at bay. You see, 22 might be a good option for the Outlaws as they post Kendall Wells up with her. She hit that three. She didn't even think twice when she caught that ball for the three-pointer, Jesse. She just released it. One of the quicker shots that we've seen uh, the Marlow Outlaws take. Second foul for Wells. That free throw's good. We're back to a 12-point game. Jaden Wells checks in for Kendall. Second one good as well. 22. She's got a nice looking shot. I wouldn't be uh, surprised if, I'm not so surprised now that she can make that shot as Linder with a great move of her own. And that's got to be Underneath. crushing for Marlo. You hit two free throws and the Warriors are scoring three seconds. Yeah, they went down there quick. They're a little, I don't know if that's an intentional sideline break that Coach Simon ran there. Or if that's just our girls playing basketball and passing it to the open player, but they were able to get an easy basket. Is good defense by Beller. He had a bounds on the Outlaws. But you can see you were we were just talking about that that last possession. Number ten for the Outlaws. She's trying to force the issue, but Kelby Beller is doing a good job of keeping her in front of her and making her take tough shots without fouling. They run another zone set here against this 2-3. Nice going pass down low. by Taylor. The official wanted to call foul. Now he's going to get her there. But that was a good look by Jaden Taylor as we take the cell vision source instant replay. And she finds Leonard on the opposite block and is unable to finish. It's a good little set play. They run a little screen to screener action for Johnson. And they will make that shot. Her offense hadn't been there tonight, Jesse, but she's done all the other stuff right defensively and rebounding the ball for the Lady Warriors. You got to like that she's not trying to force the issue on the offensive side, even though she hadn't got a whole lot of looks. And Kendall going to check back in. Come back in for Jaden. Kendall, the lone senior for the Lady Warriors that is able to suit up. Daisy Lampkins, the other senior, but she had a little ACL tear. Three won't go. The rebound by Marlow. Like about a finish, and good job by Lindert there. Get the ball and pivot away from the defender. Tough Bella shot. going up. <laughs> it goes up. in. That's just talent right there. She took a little step back jump shot and got nothing but net and Lady Warriors just lead back up to 15. She dribbles it off her foot. I didn't see the trap. 
Yeah, I thought Bella was going to get her one. Only the sixth foul, so both teams vote with six. They'll be in the one and one for the rest of the game. 5.55 to go. The Lady Warriors will be home again next week against Purcell, and then the first annual Washington tournament, Jesse, will be hosted here at the event center as they post up 22. Try to do a little fake pass. No avail. And the pace of the Warriors, it's night and day compared to Marlowe's. Well's going to go up. That won't go. A lot of basketball coming here, up here at the event center over I mean, the next couple weeks. I mean, if you're in Mar if you're Marlo here, and Wells is going to have a fast break. I'll get to that thought in a minute. Wells going up. It looked like she, I don't know, she looked like she tried to slow up a little bit on that as Johnson passed it ahead to Wells and kind of mistimed her steps and then it will make that shot. If you're Marlo, you know, the definition of insanity is doing, you know, the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I mean, how many times are we going to dribble up the, you know, the ball slow, pass it around? Well, it's their game plan. Uh, I don't think it's going to end up working for them tonight because they're down 15 and number 22. Hit her last two free throws. Tries to cut this lead. And she's not able to. Leonard, another rebound. Gets it to Johnson. Nice extra pass. Warriors being patient. Wells gets fouled. She'll be shooting one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Jesse, how about that? Washington hosting the tournament. First one since I since I can remember. Well, we got we that certainly got the arena for it. For sure. And we want to show it off and bring in some good competition. North Rock Creek be the number one seed on the boys' side. The girls' side looks to set up as far as the seedings go, Washington and I believe Tecumseh are the one and two seeds. And so it should be an exciting week of basketball. You guys need to make sure you come out, check out these both Warrior teams. We will be streaming every game here on Squirtle. Only going to broadcast the Washington games, though. That's a lot of a lot of games to broadcast. If you're thinking, I think it's 24 games. I don't know if we have the voice for that, Jesse. And the uh, Washington scorekeeper is showing their bias here. They're going <laughs> to put Marlowe back down to three points, and there we go. They're bringing it back up. The thing we got to hear on the Squirtle broadcast, 34 to 18. I like I like 33-3 more, but you know we can change it back. Yeah, we'll be streaming the games here. We'll also do the championship games, and hopefully both Warrior teams will be in those. Kendall hits the second. Of the one and one, where's up 17. Here, is, if I'm the coach here, I'm saying no fouls, please. We do not need to put them at the free throw line, and we do not need to stop the clock. Get this clock rolling. Get this boys' game going. Lady Warriors picking up full court. We'll see what Marlo does here. You think they're going to start playing with a bit more urgency? Well, yeah, if they can get a good look, and that's a decent look there for number 10. She's not able to hit it. Again, get well well by Wells there. Toughness and just takes that rebound, but then gives it back on the turnover. Lady Warriors flying around on defense. Presley Johnson sets the check back in. Marlo looking for number 10. They get it yeah. to her. That's a good, again, good defense there by Kelby as she's able to get around. Left hand attempt by 23. Excuse me, 32 is no good. <laughs> it's all over the place <laughs> right now. Good hustle there by Sheppy. She gets the turnover and looks to push. It's my right there to slow down and set up the offense, try to drain some of this clock. Both teams ready to sub in some players on the next dead ball. Yeah, 
340 to go. Lady Warriors, like you said, Jesse, looking to eat up some clock. And you got to wonder if they're going to try to just hold the ball and make Marlo come out there and guard him. Yeah, if, if you're Marlo, I don't, I don't know what you were doing just sitting there watching. You got three minutes to go win this game. Yeah. 17 points is a lot of a lot of points to make up in less than four minutes. It's oh. a nice little move there by Beller. Going to be out of bounds on the outlaws. Johnson checks in for Wells. 313 to go. That's crazy that might sound. I might be in the longest position tonight for the Warriors. Right. A little flex action out of this inbounds play as they set the flex screen. Kelby does, and now tries to look for Linder in the post. Linder's got one-on-one. -on -one. Good decision. Nothing was there. Linder kicks it back to Beller. Nice take Johnson. there by Coach Johnson. Four. Yeah, Coach, Coach Simon is just going to make Marlowe come out and guard him and man-to-man, -man, then he's going to go play offense. If they weren't going to come out of that zone, he would have just been happy keeping the ball and run the clock out. Taha calls her last time out. We'll take one with them. Lady Warriors up 37-18 to 18 here in the fourth. We're watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Hey, Warrior fans. There's a credit union designed for our community by our community members, Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive-up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member-owned, not-for-profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're located behind Goldsby Store. We're here for you. Federally insured by NCUA. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, is your air conditioner making a sound like it's ready to take off? Is your heater not producing enough heat to take the chill out of the air? Then call Airfare Heat and Air. Dwayne Branham, Noah Zamora, owners of Airfare, are proud supporters of the Washington Warriors and are hometown guys with a hometown company that will give you great pricing on Luxair and Climate Master Geothermal HVAC systems. Need service on your existing equipment? Call them today at 405-626-1989 to schedule a service. Welcome back to the Warrior Event Center. I'm Dustin Carey, joined with Coach Scholes. Warriors up 37-18, 2.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Both teams have seven fouls. You got to think Marlowe's going to have to start playing with some urgency. Yeah. Honestly, Jesse, at this point, they're just looking to execute their plays because there really isn't a 27 or 17-point play that's available. And uh, they were a nice little set play on that out of bounds to get an easy layup. Because they're not, I mean, if they're trying to win the game now, they would have been up pressing and trying to get some turnovers. But now it's just going to be, that's something they can go back and look at and say that has good execution on that set play. That might be something they can build on in the future is Outlaw switch to a zone. And extend the pressure. Warriors just looking to take time off the clock. Yeah, minute 53 to go. Chevy hits Beller. Back to Sheffy. He's playing a little game of keep away here, it looks like. And Simon calls a timeout. We'll keep it here. I want to talk about our sponsors, Jesse. You've got you to appreciate the businesses and people that have purchased ads and banners that fly across through the screen. I had a person contact me earlier this week about how they can get a commercial put on the website. And uh, you guys don't know, you just go to the WashingtonWarriors.tv webpage. There's an advertisement link there. And click on that, it'll send you to all the options that we offer. The school gets half the, half the proceeds on the advertisement. The other half goes to school for uh, setting up the ads and maintaining them. But the good thing is you get the, it's not for a season, it's not for a school year, it's for an entire calendar year. And so if you were to go on and purchase an ad to have streamed through our broadcast today, once it got uploaded, which usually takes about two weeks, you would have that ad streaming through all the events that we do for an entire calendar year, which would include all of football season next year, uh, as well as 
some of the events that a lot of people don't know. They don't. Some people didn't know we filmed the we filmed the winter concert, winter band concert, and we also filmed the uh, Christmas play by the I believe the first graders. Jesse, you might remember when you were in first grade doing the Christmas play. Maybe, I remember maybe when playing I, Rudolph. I remember carrying the Christmas play, Coach Schultz. <laughs> I don't remember being in it. You were the star, huh? Come on. Lady Warrior ball with a minute 39 left to go in the ball game. Linder got a cheesy smile on her face on that inbounds play. Up 17. Again, this is right here. This is something that is good for both teams. I don't think they're trying to foul necessarily there, but the outlaws get to work on trying to create a turnover against the team that they know isn't trying to score, and then the Lady Warriors get to work on the stuff that they're trying to work on as far as late game situation and being able to take care of the basketball, knock down free throws. As Ryland Sheffy goes to one on one. Lindert does a good job attacking the glass. And I'd say if I was gonna give a player of the game award tonight, I'd probably go to Brianna Linder. She's rebounded well, had a great third quarter. Yeah, scored a lot of buckets for the um, Lady Warriors, and she's played really good defense. So she's done it all at all levels. And then Sheffy's just going to back the ball up. Again, the Outlaws trying to create a turnover here. Warriors kind of in a four-corner look. Rolls back to Sheffy. Bello now in the corner. She's going to drive. Dangerous pass. Yeah, and I don't know if that's what Coach Simon wants. Because <laughs> you really, in those situations, you might just want a wide open layup. Not necessarily looking for a post up. You think about if you're up four instead of up 17, and you try to make that play. As you can see, Coach Simon talking to Presley right now. You really don't necessarily need tough shots. But... Mender knocks down that free throw and to add to her total. Boys game will be after this. You'll have to refresh your page as we open up a new stream for the boys game. Mender misses the second of the free throws. Under a minute now. And number 10 from Marlowe really didn't able to get going tonight. Made a couple shots down low, but had the confidence to shoot it all night. None of the shots went her way. She's going to go up there to get one. That might be a sympathy call. I didn't think there was a lot of contact there. It was a good move there by number 10. Bella's done a good job all night on her. And in fact, the Lady Warriors have done a good job of once they saw that there was a mismatch, they tried to attack it. The Marlowe Outlaws did. Sheffy got caught on 10 every, every once in a while. Uh, they did a good job of switching it up and getting Beller back on her. So First she wasn't able to take advantage of that mismatch. The and one, right? Oh, it was an and one. I, thought, I, yeah, don't know. No, I think everybody else thought that same thing, too. Linder was the only one who's actually <laughs> paid attention. Marlo's going to foul again. Yeah, that was just a... Just, they, try, they weren't trying to foul, necessarily. She, Sheffy just did a good job of drawing contact and getting the free throw line, but that would have been a dangerous spot for the Lady Warriors on the sideline. It looks like Coach Simon's going to empty his bench. With Sheffy set to shoot two free throws. Emerson Massey, Laney Gay, Lindley Thomas, and Jaden Taylor in. We got uh, Jaden Wells set to check in for Sheffy after this free throw. And Coach Taha returns the favor and empties her bench. Second one good as well. We're just going to get the 40. Yeah, again, they, you know, they haven't scored a whole lot of points um, as that we were used to in the first part of the season, but a lot of that has to do with the, the, the play that the other team is, is going about. The strategy is trying to slow the ball down, playing some zone. A tough and one right there for number 12. Yeah, that's a, uh, I think they called that on Jaden Wells, and if I'm Laney, I might give her a hard time. They're cousins. Laney's right there for the charge. And if Jaden doesn't foul there, Laney Gay would pick up that charge for the Lady Warriors. So that might be 
might be a little bit of ribbing on whenever they talk to each other after the game. I think this is last possession here. Yeah, you were thinking to go. Jaden probably just going to hold it. She's she's a veteran player here. She's, she's got a lot of experience. Brindley better make sure she takes care of it too. And Jesse Laywood is going to get a nice victory over a top 10 team in the Marlowe Outlaws. And they made it look somewhat easy at times. Yeah, it, defensively, I think, is where I've been, I was most impressed with this game. Um, and they didn't really, they really didn't force a whole lot of bad shots. Even though Marlowe, you could tell their, their goal was to slow this game down. And sometimes as a good team, you might try to force the issue a little bit. But I thought the Lady Warriors did a good job of moving the ball, taking what was given to them. And sometimes the shots don't fall, but if you can rely on your defense like they were able to tonight, the victories will still come. Lady Warriors beat Marlowe 40 and 25. Again, remember, you'll have to refresh your browser as we get set up for the boys game. Number 14 ranked Marlowe Outlaws will play against your number 16 ranked Washington Warriors. You've been watching Warrior Basketball on WashingtonWarriors.tv.